Ah, this feels good. Man, ladies and gentlemen, I have been under the radar for the past few months because in March, as Scott indicated, I had, along with my wife, a daughter, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Charlotte. Now, can we have picked a name that's more fitting for the New England accent? Charlotte. Charlotte Schneider. I've learned a lot being a new dad. First, when Kelly was pregnant, I learned that there are three things that you should never, ever say to a woman. Number three, come on. We both know that's the hormones talking. Number two, look, we both know you're cranky right now because you're hungry. And the number one thing you should never, ever say to a woman, whether she's pregnant or not, oh my God, you look so much like your mother right now. I've also learned that most of the advice that you get along the way is completely insane. A, a friend of mine called me a little before Charlotte was born and he said to me, you like going out and performing in clubs? You like making people laugh? Well, enjoy it now because after she's born, you're never going to be able to do it again. <laughs> Even the guy who works up the street at the pizza place said to me, you guys are having a daughter? Really? <laughs> Welcome to hell, bro. <laughs> oh man, right? Terrible. Terrible. Now, for the, the uninitiated, um, when you have children, you'll no longer sleep. The parents know about this. I mean, there's the suggestion of sleep, but there's no more real deal REM sleep, right? Actually, you know what? I did have a dream early on. I was looking in a mirror, and it was me from the shoulders down, and from the neck up, it was Charlotte's infant face screaming crying, which was bizarre. Now, um, <laughs> when you get to the hospital, here's something else that's interesting. When you get to the hospital, you're going to get a job. My job was to hold a leg. Nurse held the other leg, and Kelly pushed. And, and it's, it's not an easy job. You have, to, you have to really hold on, right? And when the contraction comes, you hold on. When the contraction fades away, you just sit in there again. And I didn't realize that, you know, that Hollywood would have you believe that as soon as your wife's water breaks, it's go, 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 got to get there. It's, it doesn't necessarily happen like that. I mean, you're sitting there for a little while. And after a little while, I started to get hungry. And Kelly, yeah, right? And Kelly said to me, why don't you go into my bag and get a granola bar? So I'm sitting there eating a granola bar, when another contraction comes. So I jump into husband mode, and I'm holding on to the leg, and Kelly's pushing. It occurs to me at one point that someplace back in my past, I was holding a granola bar. And now, I don't know where it is. And I remember looking around, and Kelly's like this. And the nurse is watching Kelly, so no one's watching me. And... I look around and I notice it wedged between my hand and my wife's thigh. And it's, it's positioned in such a way that a large part of the granola and a single chocolate chip are dangling over the, the site. <laughs> and I want to grab that bar. And no one knows what's going on, right? Kelly's busy and the nurse is busy. But if I grab the bar, I have to let go of the leg. And if I let go of the leg, then Kelly is going to have the kid on the floor. But if I don't grab the bar, Charlotte is going to eat a chocolate chip before she's even been born. So I enter into these like rigorous you know, negotiations in my head. Do I, do I grab the, the, the bar? Do I, do I let go of the leg? What do I do? Now, this line of negotiations went on for so long that the contraction faded away, and I was able to grab the bar before it tainted the, the sight. You know, that's another thing. Your wife's business is just hanging out. And, and for, for everybody, and so many people came in, in between granola bars. I mean, we had doctors and nurses and student doctors walking in, just checking her out. Yeah, wow, yeah. Junk looks good. Good. But then the guy from NSTAR walked in, and I'm like, who the hell are all these people? Even more psychedelic than that was, now appearing at the site, a head. So many people, you know, when, when Kelly was pregnant, so many people, pregnancy is the most natural thing. It's unbelievable. Nothing is more science fiction than a head suddenly appearing at the site. 
I'm sorry. It's it's that's the most outrageous thing I've ever seen in my life. And and the nurse said to Kelly, "You want to feel the head?" Kelly said, "Yeah." Reaches down, feels the head, and says, "Holy shit!" And the whole room lost it, except for the shitty on-call doctor that we had. See, that's another thing that I learned. At the hospital we were at, you only get the doctor that you've been seeing if that doctor is on call. Unfortunately, ours wasn't. In her place was this terrible, sleepy-eyed mouth breather with this awful Revenge of 1982 rat tail, right? Oh, it was bad. And this guy actually had the balls to tell Kelly, mid-contraction, you have to work for this. <laughs> Can you imagine? Let, let me put it into perspective for those of you who haven't been there before. You're trying to squeeze a bowling ball through the eye of a needle, and you have this clown <laughs> telling you that you're not working hard enough? F fuck you, right? But no time for that now. No time for that because here comes the baby. Baby's coming. Here comes the baby. Baby's coming. Baby's coming. Baby's still coming. Baby's coming. I see the shoulders. You're only at the shoulders? My God, we're going to be here for hours like when you're stuck out in the country and you're at the railroad crossing and the freight cars just keep coming and this baby's friggin' long and I'm looking down at my wife and saying, everything's cool, but inside I can't feel my own feet. I mean, I can't believe how calm she's being. I would have passed out at the science fiction of it all. Let's consider the facts for a second here. We have a family member who wasn't here five seconds ago. She's here now and she's gray. After all the unsolicited advice I got along the way, why didn't anybody tell me that babies come out gray? <laughs> I was freaking out. Now there's a baby crying, and I'm crying. Kelly's smiling. I'm saying, everything's cool, right? Everything's cool. And someone says, congratulations, Dad. And they look around for my dad. My dad isn't there. Why? Because I'm, I'm the dad. <laughs> now, for anyone who's never been in the delivery room before, that is what it's like from the father's point of view. And the nurse says to me, hey, you want to cut the umbilical cord? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to cut the umbilical cord. Pretty historic, right? I walk over, and the scissors just bend the thing. <laughs> Imagine what that's like. You're in the delivery, and everyone's... <laughs> and I say to her, these are, these are lefty scissors, aren't they? <laughs> and she says, yeah, so? And I said, oh, god damn. I'm righty. And she says, oh. That's what you get sometimes. Oh. I may be the only father in the history of man who has creased an umbilical cord in half. <laughs> we get Charlotte home, figure stuff out, change diapers, make up ridiculous songs that don't rhyme, anything to get her to stop crying. You are a baby. The sky is yellow. Your name is Charlotte. And you're so cute, I'm gonna bite your face. We, we had a, this is crazy, we had a lactation consultant come by one morning, and that was a trip, because here's my wife, topless on the couch, quirky woman, staring at her. <laughs> what do you guys think is more awkward, a lactation consultant complimenting your wife on the fullness of her breasts, or the silence in the room when you say, yeah, they are full, aren't they? I've also learned that as a father, I'm no longer right. I used to be right, and now I'm just right by accident. <laughs> and when I brought this up to Kelly, she said, that's not true. <laughs> Thank you. Now, it's, it, it, it sucks when Charlotte won't stop crying or if she's been awake for 45 days. <laughs> but then she smiles. And I think about all of the things that we're going to show her, all the stuff that she's going to see for the first time, like clouds and dogs, He-Man, cereal, the word fuzzy, Farside Comics, Calvin and Hobbes, Charlie Brown, Superman, Depeche Mode, Yola Tango, The Clash, Electric Avenue by Eddie Grant, Freedom, Faith, Cows, Hot Fudge, Ice Cream, Breakdancing. Stars, planets, uh, green clovers, purple moons, Doc Brown, time travel, great cars like the DeLorean, sneezing and how it's awesome, smoking and how it's not, a million billion other things that just keep coming. That supreme miracle honor it is to turn to someone and say, this is the world. 
Welcome. My name is Brendan Schneider. Thank you very much. <laughs>